This is why I love real estate so much. I made over $100,000 in 30 days without doing anything to this property. What's up guys, my name is Brian Tran. I fix and flip properties. I buy long-term rentals. I own multiple businesses here in the Bay Area. And you know what? Out of all the things I do guys, real estate is my love. And let me tell you guys why with the story. So I bought this property in San Francisco and I actually got the deal from a fellow realtor friend who called me and said, hey Brian, I have a cosmetic fixer for you. Now cosmetic fixer in my market typically means kitchen, bathroom, paint, and flooring, right? Not too crazy. We're not moving walls or shifting anything because that becomes a whole bigger problem. But I ended up walking the property and I, in my mind I was going through it like, yeah, okay. Like I could put a kitchen in for about 25,000. Bathroom was actually already done, believe it or not. Like it wasn't up to my kind of remodeling standard, but it was pretty good, right? Old carpet needed to be ripped out and a couple of doors needed to be changed. But overall I was like, dude, this is a deal. I can make about $100,000 if I put in about 80 to $90,000 in renovation. So that was the game plan. We bought the property for about $876,000. And while we were in escrow, we were supposed to close in like 14 days, really quick. But the seller decided that, hey, do you mind giving me a little bit more time? I'm like, hey, sure, no problem, right? Like I will do what's best for the seller. Like if you need a little bit more time, that's fine. He ended up dragging out the escrow for about 45 days. Now, during those 45 days, something remarkable happened. Now, interest rates is and has been very high, but during this time period, it started to come down a little bit. Also, what came down was inventory, which means that there weren't many homes for sale, but buyer demand started to shoot through the roof. And so what happens when you have less supply, more demand, typically your price starts to go up. So check this out. When the seller was ready to close on the property, we closed on it, right? I made a few phone calls to a couple of agents and they were like, Brian, we saw on Instagram that you got this property. Like, I have a buyer for it. Can I show it? I'm like, yeah, sure. Why not? Right? Like, doesn't hurt. So after 24 hours, the agent came back to me and said, yo, Brian, I got an offer for you. And that offer was beautiful non-contingent, which means the buyer really wanted it and was not going to back out. And in that offer, I was going to net $115,000 without having to fix a single thing in that home. So what was going through my mind at this time? Now, I could have A, taken the profit, be done with it, move on to the next, or B, what was going through my mind was, well, if I continued through with the work that I was going to do, maybe I might make maybe closer to $200,000 instead of the 115. But ultimately, I decided to take the first offer and just be done with it, take my profit and move on to the next. And here's my thinking with that. The market shot up quick, but in this climate, it can actually shoot back down just as quick. So there's the risk. I would have to put out an additional $80,000, $90,000 to fix the kitchen, the bathroom, the flooring, the paint, right? To possibly make an extra maybe sixty dollars to $80,000, right? And when I was thinking that through, I said, look, let's not be greedy. The profit's here, right? It's low risk. Let's take the profit and move it into a different property that may have more margins. Because at the time, we did have other projects going on and... You know, one of the biggest things flippers kind of get themselves into is they take on too many projects, right? Speculating that this one's gonna do this, this one's gonna do that. And then when the homes are ready to hit the market and get sold, the market pulls back, they end up not making anything or a lot less than they were supposed to. So my logic was there's a profit that was already exceeding my expectations. Let's not be greedy, let's take it. And then we'll move on to the next. And so that's exactly what we did. So to sum it up, to make $115,000 literally without doing anything, it's a pretty good deal. So, you know, do I always do this? No, right? Like sometimes, you know, when I don't have as many projects in the pipeline, I'm willing to spend that little bit extra time, a little bit extra money to maybe extract as much profit from this profit or property. But in this particular situation, it was just better to just take it, use the money, buy another one, finish some of the other projects we had going on. And, you know, at the time of this filming, we actually, it was a smart thing to do because, 
you know, the market actually did start to pull back a little bit. And I think that I would have ended up doing all that work and probably making almost the same. So I want to leave you guys with this little message that with real estate, I don't want to just share all the, the good. There are some bad, right? But typically in this message of the video really is that sometimes you'll go into the project thinking you're going to have to do X, Y, and Z to make X, but you know, you get lucky, the market picks up a lot and you end up making a lot more. So you just never know with real estate. My advice is just always run your numbers on a conservative basis, have good standards with what you're buying. And you know, if there's profit and you're happy with it, take it and run. Otherwise, sometimes, you know, it can go the opposite direction. I appreciate you guys watching. If you want to hear more crazy stories or if you want to watch some of our other flipping journeys, make sure you watch some of my other videos where we actually have a whole season called Flip to Riches, where we tried to make a million dollars net in a year flipping homes. And you can find that right here.